Good morning. Let's get started back on this project. I just got to thinking, I wanted to show you, since last week I've updated this to VCAR version 12. You can see it looks a lot different and you can even use the 3D view here to uh, draw in if you want, but I haven't used this very much. But anyway, I was going to, I just took the whole pattern that we had. I may make a few changes. I did update the post processor in here a little bit. And uh, I was just showing you. I've got these little inserts. I don't know how this camera is looking, but I've got plenty of these little inserts we can put in the wood. And, and so they are shaped kind of like this I'm showing you on the screen. That's the only reason I had all this drawn out. I'm just showing you the dimension features if you want to use that. And you can get rid of those. It's just a place to screw down and, and you can thread these into the wood. These I bought from CNC Labs actually. Uh, I have some better ones I bought from Amazon. And uh, so anyway, this is not part of what we're doing. I'm just showing you why I'm going to have to put a counter bore in here. And I'm going to resize the holes that we had in the drawing anyway because we're going to be using a quarter inch bolt through these. That's what I use on my table mostly to hold things down. You could also tape this down, but let's just move on. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. So here's how you can do this pretty quick in Vectric. Uh, you can, if we had these layers, which I don't think I ever put those on layers, there's probably another way you could select all these holes, but it's easy. I'm holding the shift key and selecting all of these. Go back to 2D view. I'm not sure I like that. And so, once they're selected, go over here to um, I just went blank. <laughs> Set size, and when you get in here, do the scale items individually. That way, see right now it's showing this. It's showing the whole size of all of them put together. But if you do it individually, you can see that we'd size them at 0.19 for some reason. Not sure. Anyway, we need these holes to be a little more than a quarter inch so the bolts will go in there easily. So go a little over. So 0.26 will work fine. So all of these will be resized. Apply that. And I also need a counter bore that the so this sits down in there, and that's only 35 thousandths thick. That's a little less than one millimeter for you metric heads. <laughs> Pretty close to one millimeter. So this area right here so it can sit down recessed in there a little bit uh, we will go um, you know that's not important on this that I'm getting well it is because this part is not going in our wood this is going below the wood so don't be confused by that so in that case, I just messed up. Those whole sizes should be <laughs> the size of this, which I've got it drawn out here. I want to make that about 0.32. I forgot what I was doing. We need to do this other thing I just did on the other drawing. We're going to go 320. It's just a little over 5 sixteenths, uh, a little more than 8 millimeters, you know. that's uh, This is 3 8 so it'll give it a good grip in the wood. So let's resize them to 0.32. Now, what we need to do is make another hole. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I think what I could do would be copy. Look at that. Copy. Paste. Okay, so there's another copy sitting on top of that one now. Okay. That'll make this easy because I need another hole around those. So... Let's go back into our resize screen and scale individually again. And in this time, I want this uh, this counter bore to be 0.480. So go 0.48, apply, and there we go. Now we have a counter bore around the holes, and so. I'm going to go a depth. I've got this written down of about, well, I need to go at least 
as long as this thing is, which is 490. So we'll need to go, uh, let's get them down in there pretty good. I think the wood I have is uh, about 670 or so. It's a piece of three quarter plywood that's been surfaced a little bit. So let's just go about 650 and that'll give this plenty of room to be down in there. It's a little more than five eighths. All right, so now let's just select all of this. You know, this is where it's actually best to have that on different layers, but I didn't do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these little holes first. I should have probably done those on layers, but I'm not in that big of a hurry. I just don't want to keep you so long. Just showing you how I do some of these holes uh, to hold things down sometimes when you need to set up a fixture type thing. If you were going to make a whole lot of something, that's when you'd want to put something you can bolt down the same every time. And um, so first we're going to drill all of these holes. So let's go over here. And like we did before, we'll just do a profile tool path. And we're going to use the uh, 1 8 end mill that I like to use. doesn't matter which one you really pick and that's just fine right there when I, I haven't done this stuff in a while that's why I'm a little unsure which tool I've had set up to use uh, I know which one I'm gonna grab when I go out there it's my favorite one eighth it's kind of a blue one uh, for doing that kind of work um, and we'll do inside the holes and we're going to a depth, what I see, somewhere around 0.65. I believe that board is 670 thick, so I'm not, I don't remember that for sure. So let's go about 650 on that. Again, I like to use three digit numbers. It keeps you from messing up uh, so you know your decimals are right. So that's 650 and that's going inside and we're going to do a ramp add ramp we're going to do a spiral that gives us our hole and i don't know how many passes 33 passes see what that's taking the 20 thousandths we can probably reduce that to uh, that may take too long What's 25 passes is 26 thousand. So that's good enough. All right, now what's the name of this going to be? Um, let's call it fixture holes. And calculate that. And it says it's going through the material. I hadn't, I didn't set the material the right depth on that. So uh, not real worried about that. If we was worried about it, we could go um, look at that. But in fact, yeah, for simulation purposes, is when, like I said, is why that's important. So if we wanted to, we could go right back over here where you set your job up and set this at uh, I think it's about 680 thick and just say okay and then go back over here and you can also look at this stuff up here and see it's showing the same thing there All right so in this case we probably need to recalculate just so the simulation will be right when we do that so Calculate that and see if it looks better this time. This software does lag a little bit. I've never experienced that with the other one. So I don't know why that is. This one does lag a little. But anyway, you can see that it's going almost all the way through it. That's what we uh, had planned on there, right? All right, that's that hole. Now I'm wasting your time, but let's go to... Uh, 
let's get that counter bore in there so now click off of those we'll select all of this outside counter bore thing there you know you can zoom in and get it easier there okay oh missed one right there so those are selected now so we'll do the same thing except we're only going to go about oh i'd like to go about sixty thousandths deep which might mean that other hole wasn't quite deep enough yeah i guess it'll be all right okay we'll go 60 deep on this counter bore and it's only going to do three passes see if everything is still set nope the ramps weren't set to a spiral let's change this to whole counter and calculate that and see what it's looking like see I thought it it's still going around it's going pretty quick though because it's not very deep but yeah that's kind of how that's going to work so those will work to hold down our work uh, to screw these into that's all we need and uh, since this is the same tool we'll just put both of these in the same file so um, it'll name it whichever one I think that you're clicked on there I don't know for sure but anyway Make sure we have the right post processor clicked, and that's what I just changed. It's not in this setting here. Boy, this thing is lagging. Okay, right here. It's not that one. It's on this bench top. And it's that long mill edit. Yeah, that's the code that I edit the post processor I edited. If you want this, it's going to work good, I believe, now. I've Put the M8 and M9 back into it that I'm going to use to turn the router on, I think, with my IoT relay. All right, so let's save these toolpaths. See, I've got it visible toolpaths to one file. They're both selected. We're going to save that into our... Uh, yeah, I've got it named Fixture Holes right there. And save it. And I like to go in here and look at these g codes to be sure i like how everything is i don't remember if i showed you that last video but uh here it is right here's the one i saved so see here's where i added the m8 uh, to turn on normally that's cool you know in the <laughs> in most cnc world but in this case it can be used to do whatever we want it to do and it's, which in this case is going to be to turn on the makita router with the iot assuming it'll carry that uh, I mean, I, I don't know how many amps that pulls, but we'll see. I could actually do that on the M3. M8 is one I was going to turn the vacuum on. One or the other, I was going to turn either the vacuum on or the, the spin along with it. I don't know which. We'll see. Anyway, at the bottom end of this code, this is uh, going to be a long code the way they write these holes is kind of crazy but and then m9 is going to turn it off i like to put this at this wire we'll just move it something like 10 inches at the end of the cut and go file save just so it moves the router out of our way so we can look at our work and put our holes in or whatever whatever we're going to do to work on it and so there you go and so now all i got to do is go back into the other one and I'll fix these holes off camera here and we'll get out to the machine and uh, I think I'll upload that without someone had mentioned in that last video that why did you use the let me save this and we'll um, um Sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> locking up on you here, but I think someone said, why did you uh, try and pull up the other one we was working? Why did you use two tools 
to do, remember when I was talking about doing a clearing pass right here? Well, you don't need to. And I think I'm gonna get rid of that because I know we measured this and I don't remember what it was. You don't really have to do that. I was just showing you how to do that if you need to do that. It's just an extra tool change that maybe we don't wanna mess with trying to make a video here, but I just want you to be aware that you can, that's what that, that's how that works if you want to use that. So, uh, but these were the holes, you know, that I just changed the size on the, over there. I'll fix all this like we need it and then I'll meet you out at the table here in a little bit. Hopefully this video is not too long for you. So I appreciate you following along and I do, hope it's helping somebody out there i know a lot of people don't want to watch this long boring stuff with me but uh, i'm just doing it to see if it can just let you see how to do some of this stuff if you've never done it it's just exercising uh, just some ways to to get things done if you need to and uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this so don't think that my way is the only way I mean and, and I may do it different the next time you know as you can see I keep changing my mind on things so anyway I'll see you at the machine here in just a minute